Hello guys, welcome back to the Telecom Talk Show. My name is Tanay Singh Thakur and we are joined by Mr. Anindya Saha, the Chief Technology Officer at Sankhya Labs today. Anindya, it's a warm welcome to you uh, on our show. How are you feeling today? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tanay. I think uh, I feel honored to be invited on this show and it's a pleasure uh, talking to you guys. Thank you for coming here, Anindya. So my first question to you is, you know, I won't like to take a lot of your time. It'll be around the broadcasting technology that you guys demonstrated with 5G at the direct-to-mobile broadcasting conclave. Can you give us a little insight or uh, just tell us your experience about it? Yeah, so uh, maybe I'll start by giving a brief idea about what this technology is in a very layman's term. So uh, I think uh, broadcasting, as most of the people know, uh, you know, from, you know, from very old times has been there you know, radio and then television, which, which you know, people would have seen high power, high tower television towers, you know, from, from you know, I remember it from my childhood, you know, watching <laughs> cricket matches and all that, and Doordarshan programs. So that is, that is the uh, view that everybody has. Now, uh, from since that time, of course, in India, if you see uh, the satellite industries and the cable industries have taken over and then, and there are probably uh, very few people, except maybe the rural, who watch this uh, terrestrial uh, TV transmission. But terrestrial TV has undergone, you know, a lot of uh, changes from that time. You know, they have technologically improved from their initial analog avatar to the digital avatar, and then we call them as DTT or digital terrestrial TV. Now, having said that, uh, in parallel, the cellular industry also grew. Now, if you look at uh, the cellular towers or the cellular deployments, they don't have such high power or even uh, you know high tower kind of deployments. They are relatively low, maybe an average of 35 to 40 meters. And they are mainly used for what they we call as unicast or, or bidirectional transmission. So in many senses, broadcast is very tough because you know you transmit it and then it's up to the receiver. If, if it if it if it has a good signal to noise ratio, it can decode or it can receive the signal. Otherwise, it drops, and, and you get you know if, if you are not in the proper range, you definitely are able not able to receive the signal. Now the five G broadcast that we uh, at, at Sankhya have come up with is is I would say a kind of convergence of both of them. Uh, we call it as a cellularized broadcast where we do broadcasting using towers which are like cellular towers, which means they are uh, low power, like a 40 watt, uh, and they are their height is also small, like a cellular tower. They are not high power, high tower, like uh, you know, uh, hundreds of feet high kind of tower. Now, uh, there are some interesting things which happen when you do this. First is, if you look at the cellular tower deployment, there are many of them in a in a region like say every kilometer apart or every half kilometer apart based on what bands you have and uh, what it does is that there is another technology behind it which in broadcasting which we call as single frequency network it is like all these uh, let's say you take uh, i mean i'm giving an example of bangalore let's say you take maleshwaram you know if you if you have you know uh, cellular towers every 200 meter or 500 meter apart, and all of them are, say, transmitting the same signal uh, at the same frequency and same phase, then all of them kind of add up constructively and increase what they call as the SNR or the signal to noise ratio. That additive effect, you know, uh, is, is far, far much more, you know, more stronger compared to a high power, high tower, you know, when, when you look at slightly far off. Now, what this enables is if you get a better SNR, obviously you can give much better data rates, which means, you know, if you look at the modern trends, people are watching video OTT content, you can get very high resolution, high, high video content. So this is this is the magic, I would say, of, you know, the 5G broadcast or the direct to mobile. With the cellularized architecture, transmit architecture, you're able to deliver a much higher capacity, much better quality video, to the user, and uh, then what is possible with a normal, you know, high power, high tower, you know, like a single tower you have in the whole of city. So uh, I hope I answered the question. Yeah, got it, uh, India. Thank you. So 
you know there's this thing that when the pandemic started we started consuming ott content in a very significant increased number right so yeah. i i believe that we are still at the surface level because still a lot of people rely on dth satellite tv right so once we go towards ott completely you know uh, there will be a disruption in ott content consumption consumption through mobiles now how how is this broadcast technology going to make a difference over there so uh, this broadcast technology is something which will not work in isolation if you if you if you look at it today the way ott players operate is they tie up with the telecom service provider or an or a mobile network operator and they have a tie up at which you know the they provide the services you know and 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 there is a changing landscape there also some uh, mobile operators are trying to provide a bouquet of ott services now uh, what happens in this case is that if you look at a lot of dense urban areas in india uh, you know as such the unicast network is already you know very highly uh, congested you know they, i mean people are doing uh, people are doing whatsapp people are doing running data people are uh, accessing facebook so and and voice calls and other things so they are already congested of course they are running video sessions as well so uh, what this allows you to do is that let's say uh, you know uh, okay the first part is that this broadcast technology is very amenable for converging with the unicast or the or the or the uh, i would say the imt based 5g technology and as a result of that the innovative thing which sankhya has come up with is that uh let's say in a spe- specific region if you know the, if you have users who are trying to watch the same kind of content then you can intelligently uh have a method by which you can move them from using the cellular spectrum to the broadcast spectrum now what it does is two things first is broadcast is a one to many transmission and if since many people are watching the same uh, video they get definitely a better uh, i would say a better video because definitely as i said sfn network you get better snr you can watch high quality the other thing is does is in the unicast the unicast pipe or the cellular pipe because you de- you kind of are taking out the video traffic you are also decongesting it so as as a result of that you are also enabling your other cellular services to go you know better than what it would be if there is a concurrent voice call so it has this kind of you know a side effect but then uh, if you look at um, just the ott services and, and and i can take an example of a very uh, of an event which, which you know where there is high density of traffic for example an ipl match being viewed on something like hotstar where you can see 30 million or so many users are are are, are watching all on unicars so what happens is everybody has his own dedicated pipe now because they're watching the same thing they can be easily you know shifted to a broadcast pipe with absolutely no change in the quality of uh, reception and uh, while you you know release that much amount of spectrum from the cell phone so this is one of the significant breakthrough in my mind which this technology brings so and india are the telecom operators already utilizing this broadcast technology are you working with them right now uh, yeah so right now you know to come to your first question which we didn't answer completely we are doing trials uh, first we are just demonstrating the usefulness of the direct to mobile and how it can be received in dots uh, we had set up a three site uh, you know i would say trial in bangalore which uh, i would say from which we have some re- uh, some results of what 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 go, uh, you know of how the reception happens what kind of data rates you get we are benchmarking that we are seeing what improvements we need to make in terms of indoor reception because most of the times the users may be indoors and then see how to incorporate some of those results into the technology in, in in into maturing this technology more so once this is mature first we want to get this uh, broadcast technology mature especially for indoor reception 
and uh, you know fine tune our network topology to see you know how, how we get better once this is done and we are very very certain that we can guarantee a very good uh, network throughput at that point it is the right time for us to talk to a cellular provider and say and offer this kind of you know uh, a technology for doing offloading right so an india taking everything into account okay but this is sort of a broad question all right uh, taking everything such as 5g this broadcasting technology and every infrastructure everything that's going to come uh, how do you see the dynamics changing for the indian telecom sector from where it is right now okay so you know the 5g options have recently happened i think all of you are aware of what kind of uh, uh, bidding has been done if you see one of the important things which has happened which did not happen in the previous uh, years is that operators have also gone for the low band which is the 700 megahertz band and that's very very important because low band is what gives you the highest reach okay especially if you look at uplink you know uh, if if you think of a very common sensical thing your base station uh, definitely radiates much high power but if you take your mobile phone it radiates only very minimal power and that has to reach all the way to the to the cell tower and how does it do that it does better if you have uh, if you have if you are utilizing the low band so low band is basically a band which is optimized for coverage and uh, definitely i think people who have bid for that the operators they know the importance of that and uh, that is why uh, that is why i feel they, uh, you know this is a very significant band the other thing which has happened is of course people have gone for the usual uh, the the n78 band which gives better throughput better network densification so uh, what i see is that uh, if if somebody has to deploy the kind of technology that we are talking of the 700 in conjunction with uh, with with the existing imt uh, 5g technology the combination of this low band and the mid band which is the 3300 to 3700 band is a useful thing because you can give a good unicast pipe as well as a good broadcast pipe by this combination so uh, i see that uh, i mean the, the, it, it's a very it's a i mean it, it is a pretty smart on the on, on part of the dot to offer that low band also because it finds that this convergence is likely to happen sometime in the near future now people who think that they can use it probably have purchased it but then you know what happens is they can use it both for unicast and broadcast based on you know which uh, you know based on loca- lo- you know regions or localities where we want to deploy these services so, so india, uh, yeah. yeah sorry sorry continue sorry continue no so i i just wanted to say that uh, this you know choosing this combination kind of uh, uh shows that you know if if somebody has to deploy the kind of solutions that we are developing in terms of 5g broadcast it would be it would be ideal to choose a combination of low band and mid band like what has been done and what is being offered right so in india as in business in any industry you know you need to keep investing into new products new technologies and especially you know talking about telecom industry the technology is changing very rapidly and my question to you is a very simple one is india investing into new technologies enough and what is sankhya labs doing there yeah see technology investment is uh, is definitely required if you want to be ahead of with the game uh, see initially i would say uh, i think before till 4g uh, we were mainly uh, if you look at telecom equipments india was strongly reliant on you know outside uh, the big 3 as we say the ericsson nokia and huawei to deliver most of the infrastructure but with 5g i think uh, and also i would say a groundswell of a uh, lot of the standards activity that is happening we see that an ecosystem of startups and i would say reasonably big indian companies have come together and are building indigenous products for 5g infrastructure so uh, that is something which i think is very new uh, happening in the 5g era and i would say this is a start yes uh, in terms of investment it does need lot of investment to develop a very uh, 
robust and very high quality radio as well as all the cloudified uh, deployments that we want to do in terms of the baseband, the core network, the what we call as the DU and the CU in the ORAN architecture. So all these definitely need significant investment and significant years of hardening, field proving. Um, I would say the Indian government has definitely uh, taken very good steps in terms of incentivizing uh, the ecosystem. Uh, I, th I think the DOT has come up with a lot of good schemes in that. And uh, the other important thing I see, uh, you know, which is different, where, where this government is thinking differently is also realizing the value of the satellite as as a as a as a I would say a backhaul or even as an access technology, you know, satellite is becoming more and more important in 3GP, and then uh, this government has realized that that is also something which we need to where we should not be left behind. So there are several things which are happening, and uh, there are also companies who are looking at that, you know, uh, who are trying to create a backhaul uh, using satellite network uh, in the in the E band. And then, uh, the, so again, once all this comes together, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the hope is that uh, Indian industry will also, you know, uh, be able to play a very active role in terms of providing infrastructure equipments for building, you know, networks in India and uh, taking the country forward. Okay. And India, now ORAN is something that I am particularly excited about because it hasn't been deployed at, in India, right? Uh, but uh, some foreign countries have seen how it works, right? Uh, now, we know in a theoretical basis uh, how it will work, right? But do you think it is mature enough uh, to, for a commercial rollout in India? And if it is, will we see it in the first phase of 5G? Okay, that's a very interesting question. Yes, I think uh, Oran um, is like the dark horse <laughs> in this whole 5G game. And uh, definitely, you know, the, the Oran, uh, if you look at the consortium, has the backing of the biggest and the best uh, telecom providers uh, in, in the world. You know, AT&T, China Mobile, even in India, uh, Reliance Geo, uh, UK, Vodafone. Um, so definitely, uh, there are people who are backing it. Uh, I, I think what you have, the way I would look at Oran is that they are trying to, uh, uh, because of its philosophy of disaggregation or a disaggregated network, uh, they will have some initial hurdles because, you know, trying to get the interfaces right. They are already there. And uh, actually a lot of greenfield deployments, if you look at, US are already ORAN based today. If you, for example, Dish Networks uh, is, is one of the leading examples who have said that they'll stick to ORAN from day one because they see the uh, they see two benefits. First is uh, the ability to mix and match, you know, different components. That is a leverage which they will lose if they not go to ORAN. So. Uh, the way a lot of greenfield operators op operators are thinking is that if I stick on that path and I want to do upgrades, I will do upgrades which are more ORAN compliant. Whereas if you have operators, I mean there are operators who have also taken the non ORAN path, but then they have to go through a longer cycle to you know if they want to get into the ORAN bandwagon. In terms of uh, maturity, I would say. Uh, it is it is evolving oran because oran has a large amount of uh, base of people who are developing it it is somewhat like i would say an open source movement you know take linux i mean the codes take time to mature but when it matures you get the best so uh, people have to be patient with it so i i think uh, one of the strategies which i see a lot of companies doing is they are taking maybe equipments from the big 3 to get started and start rolling but then they also are keeping an open path where maybe at some point they will replace or they will try out oran components and then they will gradually roll them into the network so uh, i would say different uh, players are what are viewing it differently but then uh, you know some people uh, some uh, telecom players are viewing it very very aggressively 
For example, uh, if you look at Vodafone in UK, they are actually benchmarking ORAN radios against non-ORAN radios and telling where the gap is. And they are giving constant feedback to the ORAN vendors to up their game and get there. And that is, you know, so, so one of the benefits I see in this movement is because the telecom players want to make ORAN successful, they are in the process of giving this continuous feedback to multitude of these vendors so that, you know, the, the number of choices become larger, the quality of choices also becomes larger. And then finally, everybody benefits from this movement. Contrast this to an earlier case where there were only the big three. Of course, the, uh, the telecom players would give feedback, but then it will not be known to anybody else other than these big three. right? So, so there is a difference. This kind of democratization is also like a knowledge sharing back and forth. And that helps more players to come in, more players to compete, and also you know, uh, helping give more value to the telecom providers. Gotcha. Thank you for your time, Anindya. This will be all from my side. You know, I hope we can do one more conversation uh, after a few days. So thank you.